okay uh, let's talk about uh, private service connect uh, with the public service so in my last video we have talked about uh, how to create a private service connect uh, with the google apis and we also discussed the uh, the uh, overall design of the private service connect uh, what are the endpoints what are the backend what are the interface what are the consumer vpc and what are the uh, producer vpc so we have seen by deploying a client instance in the consumer vpc and this consumer vpc uh, using the endpoint access the uh, google cloud storage using the private service connect so we have seen this demo um, in my uh, in, in my earlier videos so today i am going to uh, create one more demo uh, with the endpoint only so where we will uh, you know publish uh, publish our own service we will create our own own service behind our internal load balancer and then we will publish it so uh, let's uh, see this diagram i have uh, just a second so just look at this uh, this picture uh, in this uh, in this architecture uh, in the uh, we have a region new delhi where we have two project project a which is going to be consumer and project b is the producer so producer project uh, it could be in the same organization or it could be in the in in any other organization uh, you can think like this project or producer is a third party service or maybe you can have it have this service for your internal applications and you can make it in a separate project as a producer service so here i uh, we have a vm instance of web instance in instance group and uh, we will create an i will be uh, and we will we will target our uh, uh, this instance group as a backend now this service uh, this web web service is internally exposed uh, on the internal load balancer and now we want to access uh, access our web service in our consumer project with the help of private service connect so the first way is that we can use the endpoint in the consumer vpc but before you use the endpoint you need to create a service attachment uh, uh, using the private service connect with your ilb and then you can publish your service uh, uh, towards the project like it's depend on you like uh, to which project you want to publish your service right so using the private service connect you can publish your service and um, the whitelisted uh, projects uh, can consume your service using the endpoint so we will see uh, this in demo so here we can have uh, let's delete this because i just have um one client machine is enough okay so this is my uh, client machine uh, which will access those service just to verify it right this is my client machine and so this is this is the one uh, i mean uh, one scenario that uh, we will you know consume those public service so uh, if you if you look at this carefully though both the vpc consumer vpc and producer vpc has the same ip range 10.255.88 and 10.255.88 so we are also using this overlapping network right so we so even if we are using the uh, you know same ip cider range or same network using the uh, uh, private service connect you can connect those networks so there would be no conflict so this scenario is mostly useful uh, um, let's say in google cloud platform you know each new projects with a default vpc network you know when you enable it uh, uh, the compute engine api unless un unless you disable this uh, default vpc right if you if you go to the uh, network here you will see your default vpc right so this makes your use of gcp easier since creating a custom vpc and subnets are not required but the problem with the default network is that all the auto auto generated or auto created subnets use a predefined ip ipv4 range that fit uh, within the 10. Dot, i think 10.128 yeah 10.128 and all this series right so private internal communication is not allowed between the projects because of the overlapping network right if you're using it with the same region so the limitation applies to both vpc peering and the cloud vpn uh, services so you can use private service connects to privately access service running in vms uh, or gke cluster with the overlapping network and this over this applies to overlapping between the same or a different gcp organization right so that's why um, i have uh, so so i have used um, uh, two uh, two network with the same cider range i have purposefully set this ip range so that we can see uh, both the demo in a single go right so let's see uh, the demo uh, let's first see the producer project so in my organization i have this three project but i am going to use this two one so uh, this one 26562652626 is going to be my uh, producer project 
and uh, this first one 1118 is going to be my consumer project so if you see my second tab i am already logged into this project 26526 which is my uh, producer project this project okay and here i have already deployed a web instance if you look at if you just hit this instance over the internet you will see some this page uh, right you'll see the uh, host name and the reason right and then i what i did i added this vm is into an instance group right and uh, then go to the load balancing if you go to the load balancing the load balancer i have already created an internal tcp load balancer pass through load balancer you can see that so this is this is pretty easy right you can create your web service you can then add it to the instance group and then you can add it as a back end instance in your uh, internal load balancer so everything is is, is set right so um, you can see this is my front end this is the front end internal ip and uh, this is my back end with this instance group right so now now uh, this instance group part is done back end is done and the ilb is also done now we need to attach this ilb as a service attachment and then publish it to the to the appropriate project so what you're going to need to do you need to click on the private service connect and here we can see there are four options but you go to you should go to the publish service because i want to publish this this uh, this service right so that's why i choose the publish service and here you need to click the publish service so load balancer i can choose the load balancer i used internal pass through so i'll choose my load balancer the load balancer name is ilb1 and here you need to choose web my web service you can and the network is producer vpc the reason is delhi subnet okay so here you need to create a new a reserve subnet i'm telling you why do we need reserve subnet i'm just make it reserve subnet one okay and here you need to provide this ip range so i'm gonna make it 10.20 okay so basically uh, this uh, this reserve subnet is used for the private service connect which is going to be your a uh, mediator right so traffic which is coming from i mean uh, which is flowing to your uh, producer uh, i mean flowing to your network load balancer has to go through this ip range so this is you can think about as a proxy so you can take you know you can choice any ip but make sure that it will not overlap to your existing subnet ip range just wait for a minute okay so the reserve subnet is been done so you can see that you can use this if you want uh, you can use this you can enable uh, the proxy protocol if you want to include consumer ip address and connection id but just leave it blank uh, dns is also optional just leave it as it is and then here you can choose the connection preference like where do you want to publish this service uh, for accept connect connections from the selected project accept connections for the selected networks or automatically accept so you can choose selected projects you can choose, choose networks or you can automatically so i'm going to go with the option first and you need to add the accepted project so accepted projects means my my project my project a okay which is the consumer project so we'll just copy the id of the consumer project and just paste it here okay uh, rest leave everything default and add service all right so basically i published this service uh, right so i basically published this service so instead of service attachment i should uh, make it some meaningful way publish service okay and uh, so here is your public service in this section so this is your public service name this is the network the reason the reserve subnets and the target is ilb now so this part is done this project b part is done now coming to the consumer uh, one the consumer project so in the so here i am into my uh, consumer project <coughs> so here i have this vpc1 network uh, VPC one network. I have two subnets, so I'm using this uh, particular subnet, New Delhi. You can see this IP range. This is the same CIDR range that we have had in the uh, producer project. So uh, let's see. 
uh, uh, how we can use private service connect to avoid the conflict as well as how to access this public service so if you see in compute engine i already have this client machine machine launched and this client machine is used to make a connection to your public service right so quickly go to my private service connect we would create an endpoint now uh, go to your network service private service connect so <clears throat> So you need to create an endpoint. So here, just connect the endpoint. So here, uh, I need to select this public service, right? So the target service is the that you can take it from the service attachment. And the endpoint name, just make it my EP1. Network is going to your VPC1. And the subnet is New Delhi. This is the same, you know, the IP range is similar, right? And this IP range, you will create it. Let's make it my static ip and uh, the static ip will be assigned automatically or you can choose it basically this ip range if i say here in the uh, in the uh, diagram let's see let's create the endpoint first so i'll tell you like why do we need these two private IP, one from the uh, you know consumer side and the another is from the private side. You have seen that, right? So I'll let you know why do we need it. <coughs> so you can copy this uh, IP address and put it here. Oh, maybe just. So this is the IP uh, that was, uh, and here also you have some IP, right? 10.1.2.0 something like that let me check here uh, what was the IP name if I edit this service detail I had this IP name right yeah reserve subnet one where is the reserve subnet one let me see that in VPC network if I go to producer VPC yeah so this is the reserve subnet so what was my yeah this is the one okay so basically when you are when your client machine try to access your endpoint and your endpoint and your public service is a part of the private service connect so basically this endpoint and this public service ip will talk to each other right and that is the reason your vpcs in both the region having the same side range will not conflict because this is going to be netted right so now that my endpoint has been created with this name and you can see that is all automatically accepted uh, by my producer uh, producer project and it is the P P connection id and this is targeting to my public service and this is the ip range right so let's do one thing let's sss to my instance client machine instance and try to access the web service Let's SSH to it. <clears throat> Meanwhile, you need to copy this uh, uh, endpoint IP because we are now directly hitting our uh, load balancer. We are hitting the endpoint IP. Okay, just curl, and this is the IP, right? It, 88.3 so you can see that right i am able to access my web, web web server right you can see that this is the web one right now uh this ip is something that you cannot you know share it with your clients so to you know check it with the dns uh, you can simply just copy this uh, uh, ip and go to your dns so I, I have this private zone and you can just update the you know record a record so save it and now if you try to hit uh, curl my app dot example dot com you can see that with using the dns you can um, you can access your web server which is hosted in your public service and you are accessing this public service from the consumer project right so uh, this is the way that we can use uh, P, uh, private service connect to access the public service across the project and we can also avoid conflicting the ip cider range then two network right 
because of these two uh, you know reserve ip ip range and the endpoint ip uh, the uh, the uh, the both network cannot be conflicted so imagine if you have multiple consumer multiple customers so you can have another project with uh, uh, with the project c as a consumer and then that project can also access your public service by simply creating the endpoint right so this is how your third party service provide their services all right so that's it for today in next video we will see and uh, we will come up with the another demo with the backend and we will see the use case like why do we use why do we you know use the backends instead of the endpoint all right so i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next demo thank you